Cause this is the moment you've waited for Well, hey, I want to welcome all of you here at Pathways, especially if this is your first time with us. We're in a series called At The Movies, and uh, perhaps you're thinking, like, what's a series? So here's what we do. For every four or five weeks, we take a relevant topic or a passage of Scripture, and we talk through those things. And so I'm uh, excited that you're here, and if you missed uh, part one, you can go online, and we would really hope that you would watch that, listen to that uh, at pathwayschurch.us, or you can go ahead and download our uh, mobile app. And our mobile app really is the primary way that you can not only listen to messages, but you can also give, and it's so much more than that. It's the primary vehicle for you to communicate, learn about events and small group opportunities and a way to serve here at Pathway. So make sure you download our mobile app and uh, check that out and continue with us, especially through the summertime months. Well, hey, listen, I want to tell you the why behind the series. Like, why are we doing a series at, uh, about the movies? Like, what is that about? I was talking to a guy yesterday, and I said, hey, at our church, we're talking about movies right now. And he said, oh, is, is that a part of your liturgy? <laughs> I said, well, you know, at our church, we don't have a lot of set liturgy. And he's like, oh, well, what, what, what is that about? And I said, well, the reason that we're doing this series, and I would say this to you, the reason that we're doing this series is because uh, these movies highlight some biblical truths. These popular movies during this season highlight some biblical truths. And movies are a way of communication, right? Have you ever said, oh, did you see that movie or did you check that out? Or what day of the week do we like to go to movies around here? On Tuesday, right? Because that's when you get the discount. All right? Or you check them out, or you're, you're, you're Redbox, or you're going to stream them through Netflix. Movies are the way in which we communicate. They have powerful stories and truths. And as followers of Jesus, I thought it'd be a really neat idea for us to work through a couple movies and see some of those truths. So today, as a part of our liturgy, we're going to look at the Black Panther together. All right? Now, how many of you have seen the Black Panther? Can I see a show of hands? You saw Black Panther? If you haven't seen the movie, this next part is super important. It's going to kind of set the introduction and help you to understand what takes place in the Black Panther. It begins with a creation account. It begins with how the world began. And so if you haven't seen the movie, this is not the Christian uh, creation narrative. This is not the creation account that you're going to find in Genesis 1 or 2. So I don't want you to hear me say this and you're like, oh, is that really in the Bible? I should read that. I never heard that before, okay? So if you're new to church or you're, you're not like a God person, faith, this is not the Christian account of how the world began. This is like the Black Panther, okay? It's a fictional thing. But you need to listen because this is so hugely important as I set this up. So in the movie, it begins with a meteorite made of the strongest substance in the universe, and it hits the continent of Africa. And it affects all of the plant life. And there are five tribes that settle on it, and they call it Wakanda. They call it Wakanda. Now, uh, these five tribes are warring. There are a lot of tension, and they're warring against one another until there's this one warrior who receives a vision, and in this vision, he is instructed to go ahead and to eat this plant. When he eats the plant, he has these supernatural abilities and strength and agility and speed. And so uh, he goes and he receives this message that he's going to serve as the protector. His main contribution is to be the protector of Wakanda. Now, what is he protecting? Well, he's protecting a resource. See, the nation of Wakanda is a superior, far more advanced technologically, and it really just outpaces everyone in the universe. And so it's this resource that helps the Wakandans, to be so advanced in their civilization. And the main question, really the question that takes the rest of the movie that it answers is this. Here's the question. The question is, what are those with resources going to do about the suffering in the world? Now, when we see that word resources, we think what? We think money. 
What are those with resources going to do with the suffering in the world? But true to the movie, the resource that the Black Panther is talking about is vibranium. Now, vibranium is a fictional substance, so it's the strongest substance. If you took chemistry, you're not going to see it on a periodic chart. It's not like VI or something. This is a made-up thing, all right? It's a strong substance. It's a vibranium. And what vibranium did for the Wakandans was to help them with their technology, to help them advance. In fact, this vibranium was a healing source, could alleviate suffering. It could bring healing to those who were hurting. It could really change the whole entire universe. They were sitting on this resource. And what you're going to see through the movie is that the Black Panther, he has to resolve and he has to figure out what he's going to do with this resource. Like what's going to happen? And there's three options. There's three options that the Wakandans, led by the Black Panther, the protector of Wakanda, there are three options that they can do with this vibranium. The first is this, they can hide it. They can hide it. Or they can hurt it. Or finally, they could share it. They could hide it, they could hurt it, or they could share it. Can you say that with me? Hide it, hurt it, or share it. Come on, one more time. Hide it, hurt it, share it. They could hide it, they could hurt it, or they could share the vibranium. That was kind of the big idea. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what does this movie, what does this movie have to do with me? What does this movie have to do with us? Well, every single one of us has been entrusted with a resource. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you've been entrusted with the gospel. The gospel is good news. It's the news. It's the message of Jesus Christ that God's love was sent to the earth while we were sinners and separated, while we were warring against one another, while there was a lot of tension inside of our souls and with one another. God said, I love you so much that I'm going to send my son and my son is going to die on a cross for you. And this message has been entrusted to those of us who have shifted our trust from ourselves to Jesus. We are those who hold and steward the message of Jesus Christ. And you know what? We have some options, don't we? What do we do with the message? Do we hide it? Do we hurt it? Or do we share it? Do we hide it? Do we hurt it? Or do we share it? So what I'm going to do for the next couple minutes, I'm going to go ahead and I want to show you a couple clips from the movie. And then I want to walk you through the journey, not of the Black Panther, but the journey of the Apostle Peter. Peter who journeys through this and he actually has to navigate what he's going to do with the gospel message. Really cool and we're going to apply it to ourselves. So under this first idea of hiding it, how do you hide it? We're going to see in this clip how uh, the Black Panther, he has a, a conversation, uh, he has a conversation with his father about this idea, his role in hiding the resource. So take a look at this clip. And we still hide? Why are we still hiding? Why? That's the question that's posed. Now, the, the Apostle Peter, he hides the gospel. And in fact, you'll, re you'll read in a couple of the gospel accounts on the night that Jesus was arrested and he was taken by the high priest and the, the Roman guard. Peter has an opportunity with the gospel, with Jesus, with the message, and he hides it. In fact, uh, the Gospel of Luke records this. If you have a Bible and mobile device, you can go to Luke chapter 22. It says this. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. Who saw him seated? A servant girl. It's like a junior high girl. She saw him seated, Peter seated at the firelight. A junior high girl probably had braces and her glasses on. And she sees across the fire. She's around there and she sees Peter on the other side. They're seated around a what? A fire. Place of warmth and of light. And here's what she said. She looked closely at him. Have you ever, anybody ever just kind of looked at you a little too long and you thought like, what are you looking at, right? Like, what, why are you staring at me? Do I have something in my teeth? Like, what's the deal, right? Like, this is where Peter was. Like, well, why are you looking at me? And this is what she said. She said, uh, this man was with him. And what does Peter do? Peter denied it. Notice what he said, woman, he doesn't say girl, it was just a servant girl. Woman, I don't know him, he said. And this is so fascinating. Watch what Peter does. Peter said, he goes, he went outside. Where did he go? Outside. Where did he leave? He left the fire. He left the place of warmth, of light, and he hid. And he wept bitterly. 
Peter, the person who spent three years with Jesus, saw all of his miracles, watched all of his, uh, not only miracles, but heard all of his teaching. He was a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. He was called as a fisherman to be fisher of men and women. He was empowered with this resource. He saw it. He was an eyewitness. He held it. He was with Jesus, had meals with Jesus, and in a moment, he hid the gospel. He went outside, and he wept bitterly. Now, if you're anything like me, don't we sometimes hide it? Don't we hide the gospel? For whatever reason, as Peter, as he, as he lied and denied, as he went to hide, I mean, don't we do that sometimes? We hide the gospel. We hide the most powerful resource because for whatever reason, we're afraid. Perhaps we're ashamed, or what is this person going to think if I, if I say something? I'm not sure because, you know what, I don't want to offend someone. Or maybe we just say, you know what, I'm going to hide it because uh, my past, and I know what I am, and so therefore, I'm not sure. I, I would just rather hide from that. We live in a culture and a society that has made faith something to be hidden it's kind of privatized. Or maybe we've fallen under the lie that the gospel is really just about us and for our own comfort and for our own preferences and what we can gain from it. And we miss the power of the strongest message that was ever given to humanity. And that's God's love expressed through Christ. And we hide it. We hide it. Don't you do that sometimes? I do. Sometimes there's moments where I know that I could share the gospel and I just... I hide it. Now, another option is to hurt the gospel. About midway uh, through the movie, there's this antagonist, and he's the cousin of the Black Panther. His name is Killmonger. And he has this new idea, a way in which to use this resource to do something else with vibranium. And what he proposes is to overthrow, to start a revolution. The next scene that you're going to see is him coming to power. He actually defeats for a brief time. He defeats the Black Panther. He challenges him and he overthrows the Black Panther. And he has his idea that he wants to share with the Wakandans. He says, this is what we should do with the resource. Check this clip out. So Killmonger in that scene has this idea that he wants to, uh, he wants to arm those who are oppressed to form this revolution, to revolt against the oppressors. Makes sense. Makes sense. If you have something strong and you have a resource, why wouldn't you just use it to help those who are oppressed? Do you know Peter actually did this? On the same night that Jesus was betrayed, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane with, with all the disciples and with Jesus himself, if you remember, Judas comes and he betrays Jesus with a kiss, right? Betrays him with a kiss. And, and when he betrays him, Peter does something interesting. Look at John chapter 18. This is what he does. Simon Peter, who had a sword. Now, the question is, why did he have a sword? He had a sword because he was a zealot. His sword because he was... A zealot. A zealot was someone who wanted to overthrow the oppressor. Who was the oppressor? It was the nation of Rome. So this is what Peter does. He drew it out and he struck the high priest's servant, cutting off the right ear of this servant. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, uh, Peter, put your sword away. He commanded Peter. It wasn't a suggestion. And here's what Jesus would say to you and to me today. Put your sword away. Don't hurt the greatest message that I've given you. This message was not led, was not meant to lead a rebellion. That's why Jesus says to him in the Gospel of Mark, Peter, am I trying to lead a rebellion? No way. I'm not trying to do something that's of violence. I'm not trying to, to overthrow something, a nation through violence. That's not what I'm about, Peter. I'm about serving. I'm about caring for. I'm about loving people. And Peter kind of got this twisted up because he wanted to overthrow Rome. He wanted to use force and violence. We can hide it and we can hurt the gospel. You know, we can weaponize the gospel today. You and I can actually hurt the greatest resource that God has entrusted to us by using our words in a way that could push people away. 
A gospel that is full of love, when we use words of hatred, it can push people away. When we make jokes about certain groups of people, when we use racist thoughts or, or patterns in our, we actually push people away. When we demonize people, when we don't understand someone's experience and we turn the gospel and we use it away to create separation between us and them or a group of people, we're all at fault of hurting the gospel message. Just think about this in our context today. Just this week, two high-profile people battling and gave up and committed suicide. Think about what's going on in our nation just this past week, those people who were not invited to participate at the White House, the Philadelphia Eagles, they were disinvited. Think about what takes place every single day in our schools. How many violent acts have been committed in 2018? Just think about what takes place in your office every single day. When there's opportunities to share God's love and to use it in such a way. And what do we do sometimes as Christians? We either hide it or we hurt it. We participate. We just join in or our silence just speaks volumes to people who are around us. And Jesus doesn't want us to hurt his message. That's why he modeled. He said to Peter, put your sword away. And he modeled to Peter how we begin to share the gospel. We begin to share the gospel by serving our world, by making room in our lives, in our experience, to give a listening ear, to serve, to participate. That's one of the reasons I love Pathways. We're part of something called Party in the Park this summer. You know this. We're serving the community. We get to, get to serve them. That's why Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Like when you and I, when we serve our world, there is a, there is a world that begins to open up. They begin to ask questions. They begin to say, so, so what does this mean for you? What does that look like? And we have an opportunity to share the gospel. This is what takes place with the Black Panther. He, he gets into this first conversation with his ex-girlfriend, Nadia. In this next clip that I want to show you, Nadia begins to give the Black Panther kind of a mindset shift when it comes to, to vibranium, what the Wakandans can do with it. So take a look at this conversation. Kind of see the love story there. Women, that's how they hook you into the movie. So uh, you see that exchange, though? See the tension between the Black Panther? He was saying, if they would know of our society, we would lose who we are. She said, we're strong enough to share and to protect who we are. You know, when I was, uh, he, he, his default is back to hiding it, right? Black Panther is still at a place where he wants to hide it. If you were like me and you grew up in church, you remember the song that we used to sing together? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Do you know the song? Sing it with me. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Put your, put your finger up like this. If you don't know the song, this is like top 10, okay? You can download this Spotify worthy right here. Remember that verse? It went like this. Hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a... No, I'm going to... But sometimes we don't do it. Won't let Satan. Uh, that was like my favorite verse. We would turn to the girls in kids' church and we would like breathe on them. And sometimes, you know, anyways. It's so easy for us to hide it, isn't it? So much more convenient. It's like we don't have to get risky in our relationships. We can just hide. Or we can use the gospel and we can weaponize it. We can take it and turn it against somebody else, and we can say, you know what, I'm right, and you're wrong. Jesus never came to this earth to be right. If he wanted to do that, it would have taken about 30 minutes. He would have just gathered everybody together when he hit earth, and he would have said, you know what, I'm right, all of you are wrong. Here, let me, you ask all your questions, I'll prove it to you, I'll do some miracles, and you know what, we're done. Jesus never did that. You know what he did for 30 years? He was pretty quiet. And he was taking in society and culture and he was understanding and he was waiting for his moment where he could begin to share the message of who he was, his love for our 
world. And sometimes we need to listen much more than we need to speak. Because when we have an open door and when we share the gospel, something powerful can take place. This is what you see at the end of the movie because the Black Panther kind of transitioned and he realizes, you know what? It's our time to share as a nation with the rest of the world. In this next clip, you'll see him sharing and, and talking to the world about what the Wakandans want to do with vibranium. Take a look at this. King T'Challa knows the answer to that question. The Black Panther realizes that the resource that he has could alleviate suffering, and he comes to grips with the reality that it's our time to share it. We can no longer, we must not stop from sharing what has been given to us. And isn't that true for you and for me? Imagine as a church, imagine a community of people that are willing to share the strongest message that has ever been given to humanity, we could share a message of hope and of love, that God has a plan and a purpose and a path and an eternity with the Father through Jesus Christ. You know, Peter got this. He saw it. After hiding, after hurting the message, he, he came to this place where he wanted to share the message. In fact, when Jesus was crucified, he left Jerusalem. They all fanned out as disciples. And he came back after he saw the resurrected Jesus. And he said to the very oppressors, he said, you know what? You killed him. God raised him. Say you're sorry and repent. You killed him. God raised him. Say you're sorry and repent. He was so bold and infused with courage and confidence that he wanted to share the message of Jesus because he realized that this resource, this hope, this gospel is what was going to change people. Why? Because it changed his heart. It changed his life. And if you're not a Christ follower today, I think one of the main reasons that I think is so incredible about the message of Jesus, why would people for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years continue to give their lives to a message that was untrue? Peter saw the resurrected Savior. All those disciples saw Jesus raised to new life, the hope that was given to be able to share the message of Jesus. And at the end of his life, Peter writes a letter. He writes a letter to a church just like you. Writes a letter to a group of people just like me. In fact, uh, in the movie, that last scene that you saw kind of picks up a great line. It says this. It says, in times of crisis, in times of crisis, the wise build bridges while the foolish build barriers. This is what Peter does. He's a wise, now learner of Jesus, and he builds a bridge. Listen to what it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says this, it says, but you are a chosen people. That's like Old Testament stuff. You are the Jews, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. He is bridging the Old Testament theology of the Jews, and he's now bridging it to the church of Jesus Christ. Because when, when Peter came back to Jerusalem and he said, you know what, you killed him, God raised him. Say you're sorry, repent and say you're sorry. God used Peter to declare a message of hope to a group of people. And on that day, the church was established. 3,000 people who he shared with came to faith and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Peter says, you know what? I want to bridge what was taking place in the Old Testament to what took place when the church was launched to what takes place today, that we are called to share the gospel, that we're a royal priesthood, a chosen people. Listen to what he says in verse uh, 10. He goes on and he says this very next verse. He says, uh, you who are called out of darkness into his wonderful light. And then he ends this way, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You've received mercy. Did, did you know what the movie picked up on? The movie picked up on this verse. Once you were not a people, now you are a people. Once you've not received mercy, now you've received mercy. You know what the movie said in that last scene? It said, more connects us than separates us. Isn't that true? You know what connects us? We all need mercy. Because we all know that deep inside, we just don't do everything right. Perfect. 
There's some core things that every single person needs. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter your, your status or your education. We all need to know that we're loved, we're accepted, and that we can discover our true identity. And we do that through relationship with God based on who Jesus Christ is and is, and will be. And now, for those of us, the hundreds of us who call Pathways Church home and know Jesus, we have the privilege to share that message. Not just through uh, serving at a party in the park or taking those little things and giving them to neighbors at popcorn bags, but we have the responsibility every single day when we come into contact with people, we can look at them and say, you know what, how can I serve them? How can I share this gospel? Whether I say it with words, whether I do it with my actions, whatever I can do, I just want people to come to faith in Jesus Christ. I want their lives to be changed. I want my heart to be broken for what breaks the heart of God, and that is people. The most important thing that is in this world today, the most treasured possession of God are not our possessions, they are his people. He loves them deeply. He gave his son for them. And every single week, we get to come into a place like this and sing songs and to worship and to hear God's teaching. And there are hundreds and thousands of people who are hurting. Are they good people? Yes, but they're hurting. Are they good people, but they're lost? Yes, they are. Because God's love has not touched their hearts. And it's our privilege and our duty and our responsibility to share that message. So we can hide it. We can hurt it. We can share it. What's your default? What's your default if I were to ask your spouse or your girlfriend or, your, or your, your, your small group leader or somebody that you serve with? Better at hiding it? You hurt it? Or do you share it? I think all of us could say that we would want to grow in sharing the message of Jesus Christ. As we close in the word of prayer, let's pray that God would birth this passion inside of us. Father, we, we, we come to you today, and for many of us, we, we know this message. We know, God, that we've been entrusted with the strongest message that was ever given, and we know for many of us that we've experienced your love and your grace, but it's so easy sometimes to step away and become cold and apathetic to what you call us to do and to be a part of. God, the final command that your son gave us was to go and to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Forgive us, God, of not having a heart for those who don't know you. God, help us. God, give us so much passion and energy, God, to look at people around us and to share the message of Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity. And so in the next moment, if you want to establish that relationship and begin a brand new path, then you can just quietly, softly at your seat say this prayer with me. God, I'm here. And as Peter said to those who had killed your son, you killed him, God raised him, repent and say you're sorry. God, here I am to say I'm sorry, to repent, to confess of my sins. God, I need you to come into my life. God, I am transferring my trust for myself or my job or whatever relationship, to establishing and beginning a relationship with you. So forgive me of my sin and come into my life. I receive this by faith. God, I pray for every single person who knows you, God, now that you would give us supernatural energy and power to be your witnesses, to share. Share the greatest message, the hope of Jesus Christ with our world. We pray this in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thanks so much for being here this weekend. Make sure that you join us next weekend. This next weekend is Father's Day. Bring all your dads out. We give a special gift to the dads. And uh, thanks for being a part of Pathways Church. God bless you.